Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Welcome back to Spanish Lessons with Professor Jason. Glad you've joined me for Lesson 10 in my 13-part series on asking and answering basic questions in Spanish. In this lesson, Lesson 10, I'm going to focus on how to ask and answer questions about weather and the seasons. But before we get to that, let me remind you about the other topics I cover in this series. Okay, you can see from this slide where today's lesson fits into the overall sequence and what the other topics are. I recommend viewing the entire series in order, since I've designed it so that the vocabulary and grammar structures build on each other in terms of complexity. All right, let's go to the whiteboard for our discussion of the questions and answers for today's lesson. Okay, so let's get into our discussion of el tiempo, or weather. I'm going to talk about how to ask and answer questions dealing with el tiempo o el clima, right? Weather and climate. The most typical or common of which being simply, what's the weather like? ¿Qué tiempo hace? We'll look at lots of variations on this theme. But before we do that, I wanted to look at some very standard ways of answering that basic question. ¿Qué tiempo hace? You remember back in part two, we featured this particular question, ¿Qué tiempo hace? as a, an example of a formulaic question in the sense that it doesn't have a it's it's literal meaning doesn't translate into what's the weather like for example que tiempo hace and the responses for example I'll just give you one here the weather is nice hace buen tiempo are equally formulaic so it's formulaic in the sense that the question's always the same and the response patterns are relatively fixed. Now I say relatively because we're going to look at mm, four or five different ways or four or five different formulas for responding. Okay, The most common involves using the verb hacer. So we'll look at hacer. Um, another option is to respond with a verb, but the verbs that we can respond with here are limited. Another possibility is to respond with the form I, which is the form of the verb haber. Yet another option is to use expressions with the verb ser, to be. So I guess it turns out to be, oh, I left one out, estar. So we're going to see, like I said, four or five, basically five different formulas for responding to questions about the weather and climate unexpected challenge here because this green marker doesn't want to erase. So let's look at how to respond with hacer, first of all. ¿Qué tiempo hace? Formulaic response is to say hace, respond with one of the following. Hace buen tiempo is one option. The weather is nice. Hace buen tiempo. And also say hace mal tiempo. So if the weather is bad outside, as it is right now, it's very cloudy, it looks like it's going to rain, and I just want to say in general that the weather's bad. Somebody asks, ¿Qué tiempo hace? Hace mal tiempo. The weather's bad, right? Hace calor. It's hot. Hace calor. The opposite. Hace frío. Hace frío. It's cold. With these two, we could say... Hace mucho calor, hace mucho frío. I guess I should put that over on this side. Hace mucho calor, hace mucho frío. With this expression, I can say, hace muy buen tiempo, o hace muy mal tiempo, right? Muy buen tiempo, the weather is just great, fantastic. Hace muy mal tiempo, the weather's horrible, okay? So, hace buen tiempo, hace mal tiempo, hace calor, hace frío. A couple more options with hace. Hace sol, it's sunny. Hace sol, or it's windy. Hace viento. Hace viento. So, that's our first possibility in terms of formulated response, is to respond with hace. ¿Qué tiempo hace? Hace buen tiempo. Hace mal tiempo. Hace calor, it's hot. Hace frío, it's cold. Hace sol, sunny. Hace viento, it's windy. Okay. In case you're curious, right here, where I'm recording from, Springfield, Missouri, hace frío, 
y hace viento. All right, but I can't say everything I want to say because I've only introduced hace. So one down. Let's take a look at the next possibility for answering. That would be using a verb. Our options are pretty limited here. The two most common are llover, llover, to rain, and nevar, to snow. Llover, nevar. Conjugated in the third person, the impersonal form, really. We can say llueve, it's raining, or nieva, it's snowing. So we have a couple of stem changing verbs here. Llueve o nieva. Okay. One possible um, variation is to conjugate these as estar plus the present participle or the yendo ando form. We just happen to have one ER verb and one AR verb. So I could say, if somebody asks, what time is it? I want to say, right now it's, it's raining. ¿Qué tiempo hace? Or what's the weather like? I'm sorry. ¿Qué tiempo hace? Right now it's raining. Está lloviendo. Está lloviendo. Okay. Está lloviendo. That should be an O here. Está lloviendo. If I want to say, it happens to be snowing right now. Está nevando. Está nevando. Okay. So we can answer with a verb or estar plus the verb conjugated in the present participle ando yendo form. So llover, nevar. Okay. So we've looked at hace. We've looked at verb. I'm just going to sort of go ticking these off. A third involves expressions with estar. Okay. So if somebody asks me. ¿Qué tiempo hace? I can say, hace buen tiempo, or llueve, or está lloviendo, o está nevando. Or I can use one of several expressions with está. ¿Qué tiempo hace? Está nublado. Está nublado means it's cloudy. En este momento, aquí en Springfield, Missouri, hace mal tiempo. Hace frío. Hace viento y está nublado. Va a llover. It's going to rain. Va a llover. Which other expressions work with está? The opposite of cloudy. Clear. Despejado. Está nublado. Cloudy. Está despejado. Clear. Despejado. Está despejado. Okay. As we just saw, we could use the forms lloviendo or nevando, raining or snowing, okay, with a star. It might be foggy out, right? Está, por ejemplo, mm, brumoso is one way to say that it's foggy. Está brumoso, it's kind of misty, foggy. It's humid. Está húmedo, okay? So we're going to be adding a lot of vocabulary in this lesson, but remember, some of it goes better with one of these particular options up here. So these ones work with está, está nublado, está despejado, está lloviendo, está nevando, está brumoso, está húmedo. It's humid at the moment. All right, so that takes care of estar. Let's look at expressions that work with hay. Remember that hay is a form of haber, right? And it basically means there is or there are. Right? There is or there are. Talking about the existence of something. So when someone asks us about the weather, we use I plus, I'm going to say, a substance. That's the only way I could think of to explain it. That substance might be rain. There is rain. That substance might be snow. There is snow. That substance might be thunder. That substance might be humidity. In other words, we use I plus a noun. Okay? Let's look at some examples. ¿Qué tiempo hace? Mm. If it were uh, foggy, I might say I neblina. I neblina. And again, you can rewind to pick up some of this vocabulary. Or I bruma. I bruma. 
hay nieve, right? Or hay mucha nieve. There's a lot of snow. Hay mucha nieve. Same would hold true with rain, right? Hay lluvia. Hay mucha lluvia. Okay. Hay viento. It's windy. Hay mucho viento. ¿Qué tiempo hace? Hay neblina y hay viento. Right? Another way to say some of these things. Hay humedad. Would work. Hay humedad. Right? Or there's thunder. Hay truenos. Hay relámpagos. Lightning. Or hay truenos y relámpagos. Right? Hay tormentas. Eléctricas. Hay tormentas eléctricas. O tormentas tropicales. Right? So this something like this might work if somebody asks me, ¿Qué tiempo hace en la Florida? Right? In Florida. I'm describing more general terms. Hay muchas tormentas eléctricas y a veces hay tormentas tropicales muy fuertes. There are sometimes very strong tropical storms. Hay. Okay. So there are several expressions that work with I, and then keep in mind that we can also use a form of the verb ser to talk about the weather as well. Usually when we're describing maybe um, what kind of day it is or what the weather's like in a particular place. Okay. And just to show some examples, I might say um, hoy es un día, right? And then I'm going to add an adjective. Right? But notice what I'm saying here is we're using the verb ser. Right? Hoy es un día. It's a very rainy day. Lluvioso. Hoy es un día nublado. Nublado. Hoy es un día. It's very hot. Caluroso. So notice how the forms of the words change slightly depending on whether their function is that of a noun, an adjective, etc. Okay? Uh, it's a clear day. Despejado. As I've mentioned a couple times already in this video, aquí hoy in Springfield, Missouri, hoy es un día nublado. Es un día nublado. Es un día frío. No es un día caluroso, right? No es un día caluroso. Um, it could be a humid day. Húmedo. Okay. Es un día húmedo. So remember with I we said hay humedad. But with ser, es húmedo. El día, which is masculine, es húmedo. Right? It might be the opposite. It's very dry. Like if I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque es muy seco. Right? O el clima, el clima de Albuquerque es muy seco. Or very misty, uh, foggy, brumoso. Right? Brumoso. All right, so just, sorry, that one didn't quite make it into frame there, brumoso. Just different ways using these five formulaic forms to talk about the weather. Again, you might need to rewind and review some of that. That was a lot of vocabulary, a lot of different expressions. Now let's take a look at some questions. We've been dealing with the basic one, ¿Qué tiempo hace? And of course, there's add-ons that we could look at. ¿Qué tiempo hace hoy? Right, we might say... We might answer that by hoy hace sol or hoy hace calor if we wanted to use the hace form, right? Or hay, um, what do we say? Hay neblina, right? If we wanted to use hay. ¿Qué tiempo hace hoy? Or we could ask about what's the weather like somewhere else? ¿Qué tiempo hace? Same basic question. ¿Qué, tem ¿Qué tiempo hace donde vive tu hermano? So this could come up, for example, if I'm in an oral interview situation and somebody asks me about my family, right? Tengo dos hermanos. Uno vive en la Florida, otro vive en Texas. So somebody might ask, ¿Qué tiempo hace donde vive tu hermano mayor? Right, your older brother, right? Or, ¿Qué tiempo hace en Los Ángeles? ¿Qué tiempo hace en Los Ángeles? Let's say we got a question like that, and by the way, newsflash, right now it is raining where I'm at. Está 
lloviendo. A ver, está lloviendo en este momento. ¿Qué tiempo hace en Los Ángeles? Or, ¿cómo es el clima en Los Ángeles? Right? ¿Cómo es el clima en Los Ángeles? We might add, we can answer with any of those forms, right? Hace calor. En Los Ángeles hace calor, generally, right? En Los Ángeles hace buen tiempo, sticking with sort of the generic answers, right? En Los Ángeles hace mucho sol. Hace mucho sol en Los Ángeles, right? We could also answer with, uh, what was the second one? Um, the verb, right? Por ejemplo, llover, right? ¿Cómo es el clima en Los Ángeles? Hmm. Going back to, hace buen tiempo y llueve poco, adding on an adverb to modify our verb here. Y llueve poco. Casi nunca, it almost never, and these temporal expressions are extremely important to review. Casi nunca nieva. So good response here. This would be a great oral interview response, probably at the intermediate level almost. ¿Cómo es el clima en Los Ángeles? Hace buen tiempo, llueve poco y casi nunca nieva. Man, if I as an instructor would be very happy to hear one of my students produce uh, something like that. Okay. ¿Cómo es el clima? Let's take a, a couple other, and again, variations on that could be ¿Cómo es el clima en la Florida? o en el sur de España, or wherever you're talking about, right? Might even talk about the seasons. ¿Cómo es el clima durante el verano? Or, ¿qué tiempo hace durante el verano? Okay, so the seasons could come into play in a regular conversation or in an oral interview situation. So clearly we need to know what the seasons are. Let's start with this one. Verano. ¿Qué tiempo hace en el verano, summer, hace calor, hace sol, right? um, no llueve. ¿Qué tiempo hace en, what's the next season? El otoño, otoño, autumn or fall. ¿Qué tiempo hace en el invierno, el invierno, invierno? Winter. And then our final season. ¿Qué tiempo hace o cómo es el clima en la primavera? Primavera. In the spring. Okay. ¿Qué tiempo hace en la primavera? So you can see how these, these add-ons can be used with these various questions to come up with different, almost endless combinations, right? We can use them to ask questions of people that we want to find out more about or places. But for example, we could say, ¿Qué tiempo hace? O ¿Cómo es el clima? ¿Qué tiempo hace? And then just add on. En la Florida, en la primavera. So it's very easy to add elements to the questions, right? ¿Qué tiempo hace en la Florida, en la primavera? ¿O qué tiempo hace donde tú vives en el otoño? ¿Qué tiempo hace donde tú vives en el otoño? Ah, hace buen tiempo. Pero llueve demasiado, too much, demasiado. Hace buen tiempo, pero llueve demasiado. Or, en el otoño, hace fresco. I don't know if I mentioned that one before. It's cool. Hace fresco. No hace mucho calor, no hace mucho frío. Okay, so the seasons can easily get worked into these questions. Okay. Another way to talk about um, or to ask questions that involve the weather or the seasons is to ask people what they do. 
So I might ask someone, say we're talking about the weather, then we start talking about the seasons. I might ask somebody, um, ¿Qué haces durante el invierno? Right? ¿Qué haces durante el invierno? Now, what do you do during the winter? ¿Qué haces durante el invierno? ¿O qué haces, mm, ¿qué haces cuando hace frío? ¿Qué haces cuando llueve? ¿Qué haces cuando hace calor? So if I'm asked this question in a conversation or an oral exam, ¿Qué haces cuando hace calor? The emphasis, the weather is a secondary consideration, right? What they really want to know is, what do I do under these conditions? It's a que hacer question. I have to think of the verb myself. So I might say, I could, I could invert the order in the answer. Cuando hace calor, what do I do? Cuando hace calor, um, I go out with my friends. Salgo con mis amigos. Or I go to the beach. Voy a la playa. Voy a la playa. Or I play tennis, right? Juego al tenis. So somebody asks, what do you do under certain weather or seasonal circumstances? Cuando hace calor, or cuando, cuando llueve, right? Or cuando hace frío. Very simple to answer, right? Cuando hace frío, I might say, Use a reflexive verb here. Me quedo en casa. Right? I stay home. Me quedo. Me quedo en casa cuando hace frío. Me quedo en casa. Voy al cine. Okay, whatever it is that you do. And then finally, we can change this just slightly by using something like. Mm, ¿Qué te gusta hacer durante el invierno? What do you like to do? Or ¿Qué te gusta hacer? Something related to the climate, right? ¿Qué te gusta hacer cuando hace calor? Right? And so again, the weather in these types of questions is sort of a secondary consideration. It's telling us the context, all right, that the person's interested in. But to me, the primary consideration is what do you like to do? under these conditions, right? Entonces, cuando hace calor, I'm going to take this concern here, what do I like to do? Me gusta, remember that after this form, me gusta, we have a verb that's not conjugated. ¿Qué te gusta hacer cuando hace calor? Cuando hace calor, me gusta, and then something maybe outside, right? Me gusta ir a la piscina. Right? I like to go to the pool. ¿Qué te gusta hacer cuando hace calor? Me gusta ir a la piscina. O me gusta... What else could we do when it's hot outside? Me gusta nadar. Me gusta ir a la playa. Right? O me gusta hacer un... Picnic en el parque. That's not in frame, I can see. En el parque. Piquenique, un picnic en el parque. Right? Me gusta jugar en el parque. Okay? So, keep in mind then that there are basically three main variations on weather types of questions that you're likely to see uh, in an oral interview at the basic or intermediate level, right? The basic question about weather conditions, ¿Qué tiempo hace? And then other variations that we've looked at, for example, um, ¿Qué haces? ¿Cuándo? And then certain weather conditions. And what do you like to do? When the weather is under is behaving a certain way or during a certain season. Okay, So again, we addressed all three of these, and we also looked at five different ways to answer this first question or similar questions about climate conditions, weather conditions, right? We looked at answering 
with the five formulaic ways, expressions using passe, expressions using a verb, especially llover o nevar, expressions using estar or está, such as está nublado, está despejado, expressions using hay, hay neblina, right? Hay, por ejemplo, mucha lluvia, hay truenos y relámpagos, and expressions using ser plus an adjective to describe. So, if you didn't catch all that, you can always go back and rewind and review. All right, that concludes lesson 10 in my series on asking and answering basic questions in Spanish. Hope you found it to be informative and useful. As always, I welcome your questions, comments, and suggestions. So if you've got a moment, I'd invite you to please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this particular video lesson. It's always great to have input and feedback from you. Remember, you can find lots more Professor Jason content right here or at my website, professorjason.com. For even more updates, you can follow me on Twitter or like my community on Facebook. And I'll put that information up on the screen here in just a minute. Thanks again for watching. This has been Professor Jason, your guide to Spanish, and I'll see you at the next lesson. Hasta pronto. Chao.